This is one of Apple's internal repair tools. It might not look like much, but this is the secret device Apple uses to get inside their glued shut phones. Up until a year ago, it was forbidden to own one, but since Apple launched its self-repair program, you can rent or buy one for 250 US dollars, or around 375 Australian. I got mine used for just 50 US dollars. Included with it was five Hot Pockets, worth around $110 each. So that's $800 US worth of repair gear for just $50. The only caveat is that it's all untested. While made specifically for Apple devices, this unit is made by a third-party company. This one dates from June of 2021, so it predates the self-repair program. It's likely come from a repair shop in Apple's IRP program. With it unpacked, you can see just the unit alone weighs over 8 kilos, maxing out my scales. Why on earth is this thing so heavy? Well, it's likely to do with the industrial strength steel and plastic used in its construction. This is, after all, what Apple is using in the Genius Bar, not just some hobbyist equipment. Plugging it in is the moment of truth. With a flick of the power switch, it lights up. But the display removal fixture is useless without a hot pocket. One is made for every iPhone model and is worth around 110 US dollars each. With four or five new models of phone each year, this machine has a costly upkeep. I'll prep this iPhone by removing its two pentalobe screws and placing it into the hot pocket. This brand new phone fits in perfectly. But if your phone is a little more mangled, this hot pocket system will fail to attach to the phone. Sliding the pocket into the fixture, it should automatically begin heating. I say should because this one doesn't do anything. I tried again, but still, nothing. Has anyone got the repair manual? Never mind, it looks like it's been marked as confidential. So we're going in on our own. I guess that's a pretty good excuse to tear down the tear down tool. The main case is screwed together with hex screws. With the first piece removed, you can see just how thick the steel is. It's built like a tank. But despite that, and the fact that this one's in good condition, it still doesn't work properly. It takes a bit of manoeuvring to get the top section off, but with it clear, we can see how the loading mechanism works. Without a phone in the tray, only the left section of pins is depressed. With a phone inserted, the middle copper section depresses a small switch on the right, telling the device both the tray and phone are loaded. The copper piece is also a heating element that works in conjunction with the hot pocket. We'll continue the disassembly. Unplugging the four cables running to the lower section of the device. Next, we need to remove four perimeter screws. However, two cannot be accessed without first removing the tray docking mechanism. It's secured with another four screws. It is at this point where we face a stubborn screw. It just won't come out. Given the limited space, I couldn't get my drill attached directly to the bit, so I used an extension, but it was so stuck I risked damaging the extension. So I opted for a larger screwdriver with the adapter for my smaller bit. The large driver allowed more torque and the screw removed on the first attempt. With all four screws now removed, I could lift away the top and reveal the insides to this display removal fixture. This is actually more than I expected since most of the actual heating is generated from the separate heat pocket. But inside this HDO is a touchscreen that is only used for its screen component. The actual touchscreen aspect is unused. You'll also find a 48 volt 400 watt power supply an NFC antenna that is used to detect what hot pocket is inserted and the required heat time. This is stacked upon several PCB risers. Removing the top section will give us a clear look at the motherboard, most of which is unpopulated, indicating this is just an off-the-shelf board of some kind. 
There's even a USB port and extension cable running to the side of the unit for service. That being said, I wasn't able to find any of the software or flashing tools to upgrade or reinstall the software. It was time for some basic troubleshooting. Everything was electrically connected, but the unit just isn't sending power to the hot pocket when connected. It does however ramp up the fan slightly, telling me it knows it's attached. So the only conclusion I can draw is that the RFID isn't reading the hot pocket when it's inserted to get the required info. But then again, the manual has a whole page on error codes, from having no phone detected in the hot pocket to an invalid pocket or shorted heater circuit. These machines are often regarded as very temperamental, easily throwing errors. So while it heats... E73? What, what is E73? Let's try to turn it on again. That's totally different That's now. a different error code. But I can't even get mine that far. According to iFixit, the manual to this HDO isn't included with its purchase from Apple's self-repair store. The only way to find the meaning to the error codes is to go out and find the manual yourself on the internet. With such a large screen, I'm not sure why they didn't just write the error codes to the screen, rather than displaying a code you have to look up. This machine is in perfect condition as you can tell, but not even two years after its manufacturer date, and it doesn't work. There's nothing obvious I could find as to why, but honestly, I didn't have enough time to go in depth as much as I would have liked to, to try and find out what was wrong with it. But for the function it performs, it seems to me a little overcomplicated, as most of the actual heating of the phone is done on the hot pocket itself. This part is simply an oversized timer and suction cup puller. So what's exactly inside one of these hot pockets? I decided to find out. The lower pieces of plastic are used as a guide rail and to hold the spring-loaded retaining clip. You'll also find the wiring for the heating element, which is located on the other side of the pocket. The manual states these are torque screws, but it looks a lot more like Apple's tamper-resistant pentalobe screw, only it has six lobes. A normal Torx bit doesn't fit and almost looks like it's been designed to strip the screw if you use a Torx driver. After all these years, I've found something my iFixit toolkit couldn't unscrew. Have we found another anti-repair screw on Apple's own repair equipment, or is this just an obscure screw even my toolkit doesn't have? But the truth is, you don't need this highly engineered, costly fixture to repair an iPhone screen. This heat plate cost me around $50, that's more than half the price of just one of Apple's heat pockets. Sure, it doesn't have a fancy built-in suction cup, but it works on any device. I don't need a special adapter, or be locked in to only using it with one brand of device. Having a suction cup clamp would help opening, but for a self-repairer like myself, I can't justify the price especially when you can buy a suction cup clamp separately to achieve a similar result. While I was unable to do the comparison I wanted between Apple's and my third-party removal tool, I think it was still interesting to view the insides of an Apple internal machine. We found even their first-party solution isn't perfect. In fact, I think it's a little more clunky than some of the third-party repair tools out there. Some have gone as far to call it useless. But given I wasn't able to fairly try it out, I can't conclusively say which is the better option. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Repair Tips playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.